Hello, thank you for listening. This is going to be a little different today, maybe eh, not too bad, not too different. These are two articles that appeared in a newspaper called the Epoch Times. And the first one is about a lady's NDE. Her name is Jai Ming. And the second one is about a Taiwanese student. So the first one was in the Epoch Times on January 16th of 2009. And the second one was in the, the same newspaper on 820 of 2009. So we'll read the first one and then we'll read the second one. And there, there's no questions or anything like that. So um, they, let's see what they say. Okay. Open quote from Epoch Times, 2009, 01-16, 6.20 p.m. While Jai Ming was in that dimension, she recalled that she led a good life and did not do anything evil when she was alive. Souls who had committed wrongdoings on earth experienced tremendous pains on the other side. She remembered that in her childhood, she had always pranked a neighbor girl who walked by her house. That little girl was intimidated by Jai. In 1989, Jai Ming contracted fulminant hepatitis with acute kidney failure. She was sent to a hospital somewhere in southern Taiwan. When she arrived at the hospital, her liver and kidney were non-functioning and her pupils were dilated. The hospital issued a critical condition notice to her family. Later, she was transferred to the emergency room to be resuscitated in Chaijung Veteran General Hospital. She woke up after four days in a coma. Subsequently, she had transformed to cast a new light on life. In life, Chai was very stubborn. She thought God and ghosts were nonsense. Nevertheless, when in a coma, she was in a realm controlled by God. Souls only care about one thing. In that multidimensional realm, Jai felt timeless, and she was indifferent to the physical world. She used the word extremely three times during the interview to emphasize that it only mattered to a soul which ranking of levels it was assigned when he slash she departed from the flesh. There seemed to be judgment on the other side. It appeared to be judgment of a soul using earthly, unethical standards according to human perception. When she was in that dimension, she recalled that she led a good life and did not do anything evil when she was alive. Souls who had committed wrongdoings on earth experienced tremendous pains in the other side. She remembered that in her childhood she had always pranked a neighbor girl who walked by her house. That little girl was intimidated by Jai. As I, my soul, thought about this matter, it was a very painful thought. After she came back to the physical world, Jai tried to find that girl and sincerely wanted to apologize to her because it represented unsettled business to Jai. Finally, after looking for that girl for 14 years, she accidentally met her in a marketplace. Jai happily ran to her and apologized to her. The girl did not remember the pranking at all. However, Jai felt like a burden had been released when they became good friends after this. Wings, sounds, and the light. When her spirit was floating upwards, upward, Jai saw many objects that had not been seen on Earth, like a spaceship-like or some sort of satellite UFO. Later, she arrived in a space where there was a tall chair like a throne that was emanated light. There were ten giant winged creatures standing next to the throne. I thought, how come their wings are so huge with thick feathers? I could not tell their appearances, but only saw their white-robed images. It was a soft, gentle atmosphere in that realm. I could hear their communications. However, they were not spoken words, but they communicated with a harmonic sound. I felt they were being kind-hearted and protective. I also stepped on the path of Netherworld, where it was a narrow flagstone-made road. I remember thinking that in that dimension, there was no name for roads, yet people named everything on Earth. Back to Earth, 
I wandered about for a while. Then I heard my brother calling my name, so I moved toward the sound of the voice. My spirit entered back into the body. Once I knew that I was in my flesh, I desperately tried to twist my body to draw their attentions to me. After much effort, my stiff body started to move. Although I could not open my eyes and tongue was still rigid, there was a nurse who finally noticed I was alive. She ran over to inform my sister to come to the intensive care unit, the whole family crying with joy. Jai hopes her NDE experience will help people who are suicidal or are afraid of death, so they have a new understanding about death. All people have a responsibility on earth because God created and arranged everything. Sometimes our path are not as easy as they look, but they are granted by God for us to learn the truth, the goodness, and beauty of life. Therefore, we should live the fullness of life, be content with what we have, feel at ease under all circumstances, and help others if we are capable. If people are depressed and take his slash her own life, then their souls will experience extreme pains. Additionally, they don't know where they are going. After Jai came back from her NDE, she took a break to recuperate, started a new career, and led a new chapter in her life. And that's the end of that story. Here is another one. Open quote, article from the Epoch Times, and it says, Taiwan University student. Open quote, in a split second during the car crash, I entered into another dimension. Every time when I mention about death, people will give me a strange look. I have kept silent about my NDE for more than 20 years. Nevertheless, what happened that day is so vivid as if it was yesterday. I was then my senior year in Tung Hai University located in Tai Chung, Taiwan. I lived in a rental apartment near school. At that time, I was an intern of the social welfare department in the city of Tai Chung and also worked in a restaurant at night besides going to school. Here, I rode my moped back and forth several times between school and work every day on Port Tai Chung Road. It was drizzling and roads were slippery as I was leaving my intern job in City Hall. I was in a hurry riding in a moped line on Port Tai Chung Road. Suddenly, I was stopped at a red light. Behind me, to my right side of the road, a long moped line was waiting for the green light to advance. To my left was an island that divided cars and moped traffic. Death with no choice. When the light turned green, the red light turned green, I immediately stepped on the gas to reach the highest speed. At that moment, a truck out through a gap of an island from the car lane illegally right in front of me. The truck driver took a shortcut in order to park his car off the road by the sidewalk. As I was going to rear-end this truck, I clutched the handbrake. I only heard the sound from the brakes and felt them grabbing while my moped was heading forward at a high speed. If it kept moving forward, then me and my moped would slide underneath the truck. If I turned the wheels to the right, I'd be crushed by the mopeds behind me. What should I do? In a split second, I decided to die. I used all my strength to turn the moped to 90 degrees and forced it to collide on the island with the tall trees planted in the center. Enter into a peculiar dimension. However, up to this day, I don't recall any fierce slam of the moped nor being expelled up into the air. Instead, at that critical moment, a bright scene of another realm appeared. My consciousness was without physical form, but I was in a trance state inside a quiet darkness. Up in the glittering sky, an elegantly falling leaf was dancing in the wind so lively that it was oscillating slowly, descending, and whirling, then gradually vanished before my eyes. Subsequently, the earth was enveloped by a dim yellow sky filled with gloomy yellowish dust. In my sight, it was dim, dull, 
and difficult to distinguish between the above and below regions. Extremely high up or down to a very edge was a patch of black. I saw many people with no physical form and they surrounded something on the ground. I was curious to know why. It was like second nature to me that I hovered above these people and floated through them to the ground. I did not notice it back then, though. In fact, I was cutting across the crowd. There was a pale-faced girl who lay down in the center of the road. When her half-covered dust-proof mask was lifted off, one side of her head and face were bleeding. I recognized a voice among the crowd saying, She's hopeless, hopeless. You want to bet? I felt pity for this girl, so I helped to take the other half of her mask off. To my surprise, when I reached out to get her mask off, my hand went right through her face. Instantly, I was ejected upward and away from these people. It looked like there was a light in the sky, yet it was not very distinct. Unexpectedly, I came to a totally silent and dark place. It was the purest darkness, though, and it was not like the night on earth. I was immersed in this vastness and quietness, not even feeling any air at all. It was a complete void of nothingness. There was no people or no exits, but only myself in this dark, silent, quiet, empty, and endless state. The appearance of my guide. I do not want to stay here, for I, do, I don't know where I am, who I am, and why I am here. I do not know what to do. What should I do now? How should I do next? Where should I go? I was petrified. While I was worrying, a bright light emerged from afar, and I felt hope. It was a white light in the dark. Then I wondered, what's that? What that is? When I thought about that light, I was there right away. I saw a big hand wear a white glove. It looked like a big, wide male hand. The hand was luminous with beautiful soft feather-like light. It moved around, directing me to move to the right. I saw nothing behind this hand except for this white glove, and the rest seemed to be hidden in the dark. While looking in front of me, there was a dim yellow light emanating from a lantern. It was dangling and flickering far away. I wanted to go there. My thought triggered the motion, and I was there already. Hint to go back promptly. Standing outside of a door, I saw an ancient Chinese architecture. A trace of yellow hue light illuminated from the front door to the interior through a corridor. However, its vicinity was completely dark. I sensed there were gardens and walls. The big white glove appeared to my right side above my head and signaled me to go ahead. I walked into this room where it looked like a boudoir, a woman's private sitting room. There was a desk and a bed hidden in the dark. The only furniture that was in a dark, a dim light was this vanity, was the vanity. <clears throat> the white glove gestured me to sit down. After I sat down, I stared at the vanity, noticing that there was an oval-shaped comb on top of it. I felt it felt old when I touched it. I fetched and played with the comb. It actually felt solid. An odd, familiar, and nostalgic feeling permeated in the air. Momentarily, the white glove swung rapidly, trying to get my attention. I turned to it. Then it soon pointed authoritatively to the mirror. It demanded me to look at the mirror. I watched it immediately. I looked into this bronze mirror. There was a girl in the shadows, so I took a closer look and perceived that half of her face was swollen. Additionally, her right eye was lacerated and bleeding. She tried very hard using her left eye to stare at me. I thought, hmm, isn't this girl who is lying on the ground? Shouldn't the mirror reflect me? Why does it show her instead? With my suspicion, I touched my face, and so did she. 
I raised my hand, and she did the same. Oh, no, I am that girl. Perhaps I am her, I thought. I felt a sensation of being electrified, and suddenly I realized the truth. My body was cold as the chill falling onto my face and continued down to my bare, cold feet. I was also annoyed by the noises around me. There was a person who knelt by the body and kept calling my name. I could not recognize that it was my classmate who was an intern in City Hall too. She kept calling my name repeatedly. Slowly, I opened my eyes, glancing the grayish sky as I found myself lying in the middle of the road. End questions, end quotes. Those are great stories. <laughs> yep. You know, interesting how it's all over the world. Very interesting. Thank you for listening, and hope you have a great day.